Six foot four, dressed to the nines with a sport coat and tie, donning his trademark Panama hat, overlooking what Tommy Lasorda dubbed Blue Heaven on Earth is where you could find Don Newcomb, a hulking presence with an even bigger heart and passion for the game, a trailblazer who, along with Jackie Robinson, inspired social change, not only in baseball, but America. It all started June 14, 1926. Donald Newcomb, Nuke as he was affectionately known by his teammates, was born to humble beginnings in Madison, New Jersey. Growing up poor in a small town, Nuke caught the eye of a neighbor when a small act of vandalism turned into an all-star career. I threw a rock through somebody's window in the store across the street. He told me, I'm going to keep you from going to jail or getting in trouble. I want to teach you how to be a baseball player. Will you learn? Or will you be willing to learn? And Johnny started teaching me. So he teach me how to hold a ball, how to wind up. I had that big wind-up, you remember the big wind-up I had? That was Johnny's wind-up. He taught me how to wind up like that. He taught me how to hold on to the ball and taught me how to control that ball and work hard at it in the parking lot down the street from our house. From a parking lot in Elizabeth, New Jersey, to a contract with the hometown Newark Eagles of the Negro Leagues, Newcomb unknowingly was on the verge of changing not only sports history, but American history. In the clubhouse walked this white man with his great big hat on, and his name was Clyde Sukforth, a chief scout for the Brooklyn Dodgers. I didn't know who he was, and he asked me if I knew who Branch Rickey was. I said, no, I never heard of Branch Rickey. Who was he? He said, well, he just happened to be the owner of the Dodgers. I said, well, what's he want with me? I said, well, why don't you get on the bus tomorrow morning and come over to Brooklyn, and you might find out what he wants. Branch Rickey's goal? To integrate baseball by secretly scouting the Negro Leagues. Ricky signed Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, and Don Newcomb to contracts, and in 1946, the trio broke the minor league color barrier, and within three years, were all playing major league ball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Thrust into the forefront of civil rights and social change, Newcomb, Robinson, and Campanella played through unimaginable circumstances. We got letters. Jackie used to get more mail. He got mail one day in Chicago, I mean, in, in Cincinnati, uh, uh, from somebody. He said, if you so-and-so show up, and you know the word to use, if you so-and-so show up today, uh, we're going to kill all of you. I had to pitch that game. And play he did. In 1949, Newcomb's first season with the big club, he pitched 38 games, going 17-8 and eight with a 3.17 ERA, 19 complete games, 149 strikeouts, and a league-leading five shutouts. He was among the first of four African-American players to be named to the All-Star team, while also leading the Dodgers to the National League pennant and Rookie of the Year honors. I, I, I could pitch not every four days, I could pitch every three days. I could pitch out of the bullpen after the second day after I pitched a nine-inning game, which I did. And uh, uh, I, I just, I just, I never hurt my arm and it never, I don't know what it was about my arm. I got a little skinny arm and I never hurt it. With three all-star selections in three years and entering his athletic prime, the sky was the limit for Newcomb. That was until one fateful day in 1952 when he got a call to a higher service, a call many in his generation dreaded to receive. I, uh, I got a notice from Uncle Sam in 1952, said he needed me to settle the Korean War. Mm. I said, you do, do you? Yeah. So I, I took my orders and when the time came for me to go, I was gonna serve my country like any other red-blooded American. After two years in the service, Newcomb returned to the Dodgers, albeit a little rusty for the 1954 season. But come 1955, with his pitching arm back in baseball shape, Nuke would put the Dodgers on his back, going 20-5 and five with a 3.20 ERA, a National League pennant, and a showdown with the Yankees in the Fall Classic. There's nothing quite equal to the excitement of a World Series opener. It will be Whitey Ford for the Yankees, Big John Newcomb for the Dodgers. Don won 20 and lost five this season. Whitey was 18 and seven for the Yankees. Newcomb would have one start in the World Series, a six to five loss in game one, but Brooklyn would dispatch the Bronx Bombers in seven games for the first title in franchise history. Elston Howard sends a grounder to Pee Wee Reese, and these Dodgers at last are world champions. 
Success didn't knock Nuke off of his game. His encore performance in 1956 would vault him into the upper echelon of Major League pitchers. Nukem's 27 wins, 25 more than second-year pitcher Sandy Koufax, led not only the Dodgers pitching staff, but all of Major League Baseball. Brooklyn would finish first in the National League, and Nuke would reap the rewards, winning both the Cy Young Award and Most Valuable Player, the first player in baseball history to win the Cy Young, MVP, and Rookie of the Year honors in their career. I was 9-5, and five, and the manager of the team, Walla Olson, my manager on the Dodgers, didn't select me for the All-Star team. And when the, the All-Star game was over, I came back to the Dodgers, of course, and I wound up with 27 and 7 so you don't have to be a mathematical genius to know that uh, I was 18 and 2 the second half of the season. Prior to the 1958 season after failed attempts by Walter O'Malley to construct a new ballpark in Brooklyn, the Dodgers moved west. The stockholders and directors of the Brooklyn Baseball Club have today met and unanimously agreed that the necessary steps be taken to draw up the Los Angeles territory. Nuke wouldn't unpack his bags long. After an 0-6 start to the season, he was shipped off to Cincinnati in a trade for Steve Bilko and Johnny Klipstein. He would pitch two more seasons before hanging up the spikes for good in 1960. What Don Newcomb did for baseball and social equality is immeasurable, but not unnoticed. Late in his life, he was honored by a man who looked up to Don Newcomb as a child, a man who had it not been for the work of Newcomb and others, would have never reached his potential, President Barack Obama. After his introduction, he said, there's somebody in this audience I want all of you to know about that's here. And this man is responsible for me and my family, and Michelle and my daughters, for being where we are today, for what they did on the baseball field. It's Don Newcomb and Larry Doby and Roy Campanella and Jackie Robinson. They, they, they all made it possible for me to be where I am today. And I want them to know how much I appreciate what they've done for me and my family and for us all over, all over the country and all over the world. High praise for a life well lived. For Nuke's contributions in society made as much, if not more, of a lasting impression off the field than on it.